if you've got a piece of watercolour paper, which is perhaps a watercolour hasn't worked, or in this instance I've been using it for testing my colours on, you think you wasted it. Well, you can use it for an acrylic painting. My plan is to colour this up and use acrylics on top of it, like oil paints, nice and thick. So the first thing I'm going to do is stick the paper down to my drawing board, all the way around. Just using regular masking tape. So this is one inch wide, overlapping half an inch on the paper, pressing down firmly. Next, I'm going to get my white acrylic paint and squirt a nice chunk of paint on there. So that's probably a, you know, like a spoon's worth. And then I'm going to brush that out quickly with my little flat brush here. It's a one and a half inch. Um, it's actually a varnishing brush or a gesso brush. And those of you who say I prefer to use gesso, yes, you can do this with watercolour paper. You can paint acrylic gesso on and it provides a lovely keyed surface. Um, this is quite similar, just putting white paint on it. The difference is it doesn't produce such um, a matte finish as gesso does, so it's not quite the same feeling. I've not quite put enough on either. Let's go on a bit more. Just lay a little down. So I'm, I'm not adding water to this, I'm just brushing it on dry. And you may be, see that some of the marks I had on that piece of paper will glow through the white paint slightly. But I'm going to stain this with some raw sienna. That's the next thing. So I'll let this coat dry and then you'll see the next stage. If you want to accelerate drying, Hair dryer, just playing over the surface bit by bit. Should only take a few minutes, but this will just make it sure it's dry between coats. Now repeat the same process. This time, I'm using raw sienna. You can use yellow ochre. You can use. Um, You can use burnt sienna. So that's the raw sienna. Um, all of these colours are traditional ground colours, um, the sort of colours that oil painters have used for centuries as a starting colour rather than white. It's a myth that they start on a white canvas. Well, they might, but they would cover it with this ground colour in the first instance. So, again, a healthy quantity. There we go. Very fruity. So we've got a nice bit of paint there. I've changed brushes so I don't get any streakiness out of the other brush which I had to rinse. And now I can put it back on the easel and brush it over. This can be done with a sponge actually. Just slightly dampens. Not wet, just slightly dampens. This this way provides a little bit of you know streakiness for the brush strokes, I don't mind that. I will then paint a picture on this so you can follow that in another video. Again, I've run out of colour just before the end. Another squirt of colour. There we go. And again, let it dry for a a few minutes before you start to paint on it. If you want you can put another coat on but I prefer two thin coats like this. That's sufficient and in fact you cannot see anything of the marks that are on the paper before I started. That, those two coats have completely hidden it. Ready for painting. Thank you.